Cheers for the That's what I was saying, yeah, first okay. time. So, uh, first time, yeah. Okay. Yep. <laughs> first time all week. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be all right. Hello. How you guys doing? Good. How are you? Good. Oh, my good, good, good. <laughs> Very good. Have you done any comedy? Yes, yeah, yesterday. <laughs> A friendly reminder, cell phone should be turned off or put on silent and flash photography is not permitted. Hammond Communications is providing the video feed which will be available on the FTP site found on the NCAA Media Hub. Therefore, no video cameras are permitted, including cell phones or tablets. Thank you for your cooperation. Also, there's a five minute cooling period for the winning team and a 15 minute cooling period for the non-advancing team. The locker rooms to talk to the players, not on stage, will be open for 30 minutes after the respective cooling periods have ended.
a couple of reminders before we before we begin. We are going to start with the opening statement from the head coach, followed with questions for student athletes. At the conclusion of the questions for student athletes, they'll be dismissed. Then questions for the head coach can start. Please raise your hand, and someone will, around with a microphone will come to you. Please give your name and media, media affiliation if you're joining on Zoom. Please use the raise hand function for questions. We will address questions in the room first and get to Zoom if time allows. Now we'll start with the opening statement from Creighton's head coach, Greg McDermott. As I told the team, uh, epic game. Uh, not sure I've been one, uh, been part of one quite like it uh, in 35 years. And uh, obviously, Oregon is, they've, they've had a hell of a year. Um, what, what Dane has done to navigate all the injuries and get the team to this point where, you know, they're, they're a point away from advancing into the Sweet 16. I mean, it was anybody's game. And, uh, you know, Baylor made two <coughs> veteran, veteran plays uh, at the end of regulation. You know, recognizing in transition down four, just get downhill, put your head down. Uh, then we executed the press and, and got it in the guy's hands we wanted it to be, and we got the foul right away. And, uh, and you know, Baylor works on that little floater mid fade away all the time and he knocks it down to get it to overtime and, and and then to regroup after the big shot that Cousinard hit you know that was a tough shot Baylor was right there uh, to tie it at 71 to regroup and get ourselves ready for the second overtime uh, really proud of our guys um, they've stuck with each other all year and you know these these four have been a rock uh, uh, they've been absolutely a joy to coach they don't care who gets the credit um, they share the basketball. They play in an unselfish way. And then I can't say enough about Jason Green and his impact on the game. Uh, you know, he wasn't playing a lot <laughs> coming off an, <laughs> an injury that he had. Um, and, but he stayed ready, and he kept working. And whether, <coughs> excuse me, whether he was on the scout team or playing a little off the bench, um, he was always willing to do whatever he had to do to help the team. So I couldn't uh, be more proud of him and the impact that he had in this game. He deserved a night like this for how selfless he's been and how on, and his approach to this team. OK, representing Creighton's student athletes are Ryan Cockbrenner, Trey Alexander, Baylor Shireman, Stephen Ashworth. Questions for student athletes? Front right. Matt Arenas, White and, White and Blue Review. Baylor, just what was going through your mind at the end of the game? You're down four. You're, you're, you know, your season's on the line. What was going through your head? <clears throat> yeah, well, like Mike said, we were able to make him take a tough shot, and then I got the rebound quick, and I knew we had some numbers. And and like Mike said, we were down four, and so I wasn't going to be able to get it all back at once. And there was you know time left on on the clock, so um, just decided to try to get downhill and get a foul and, and go to the free throw line. Um, and then and then the second play, um, you know, we we do have a play for a three, um, and they kind of took away the first option, and then Colt came and set a great ball screen, and then rolled and kind of sealed his guy. And like Mike said, you know, that's a shot that, you know, I work on a lot. Um, and, you know, the, the guys had the confidence in me to, to, to give me the ball there at the end, and, and so do the coaches, and I'm just happy I could deliver for them. Question right middle. Justin Guerrero, Pittsburgh Tribune Review. Greg, uh, Dante's free throws with about 34 seconds left in the second OT period uh, were the first and only baskets that uh, Oregon managed. Uh, you outscored them 15-2 to two in that final crucial Five minutes, second OT. Just how are you able to to limit them offensively and just dominate that critical stretch? Switched our ball, switched our ball screen coverage uh, later in the end of regulation and into the overtimes, and we were a little bit more aggressive, uh, trying to make Cousinard give it up. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, and our guys, you know, we don't do it a lot, but we practice it a fair amount, and our guys executed it when we needed to. He was he was on a roll and he was killing us and. Uh, you know, I think that that adjustment in their execution was able to knock them out of the rhythm they were in offensively. Remember, these questions are for the student athletes first. Back, middle. Uh, Matthew Theodros, the Duquesne Duke. Ryan, you were going against a dominant center today who finished with 20 and 20. Can you speak on that performance against him and how challenging that was? Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, he obviously is a really, really good player. Um, tried to make things tough on him a little bit when he caught it in the post, but. Um, I think where he got us most is uh, I'm going over to block a shot, and then he's going in and get the rebound. And that's just that's just a tough situation for our guards to be in because he's so big. So credit to him for putting himself in position to get those rebounds and putbacks. 
But uh, I think when he had the ball on the block and back down situations, I let him get a few easy ones, but for the most part did a solid job. But I mean, yeah, I mean, this time of year, uh, just survive in advance. If a guy has a good performance on you, but you still get the win, you just move on to the next one. Question left front. James Crepe with the Oregonian. <laughs> Steven, just what allowed you to get free more there in the overtime periods, and how much did Shellstad being out allow, did it compromise their defense at all and allow you to get open a little bit more? Yeah, I think with him being out, it, it could, could have potentially uh, offered up a few more looks. He did a really good job uh, understanding his role in the scout, but uh, really later in the second half and into the overtimes, Trey and Baylor did a really good job of getting penetration into the middle and uh, really kicking the ball out, and I was able to uh, lose my man a few times, and you know the shot went in. A few of them didn't, but at the same time, just uh, had, to, had to keep shooting, and luckily a few of them dropped. Question on the right, Matty Arenas, Matty Arenas, White and Blue Review. Trey, couldn't help but notice that you guys were really loose going into the second overtime. You guys were looking at your crowd, you're laughing, you're, I mean, it's like a tight, tense game, and you guys just seemed like you were having fun. Why were you, why was that the approach to the second overtime? Uh, I mean, this is just, this is what it's meant to be, is, is for us to be in the situation. We know that. Uh, me and my teammates always try to try to find the fun and everything. Uh, so this situation, we kind of live for them. It's, just, it's the fun of the game. And I think that uh, for me, even though my shots weren't falling, I knew that Baylor was going to step up. I knew that Steven was going to step up. So I tried to do whatever I could to get those guys in situations to be successful. So I mean, it was a great team win. Uh, we had some big plays down the stretch from different guys. And I think that's what this team is all about, is having every man step up at a different di in a different situation. So I mean, we, we just knew that that we were ready for the second OT. We do this all the time in situations and practice. So we were ready. We, we knew that we were we were probably more winded than them. We felt like they were walking the ball up the court and things like that. And we were still able to push it going into the second OT. So we were just still trying to play our game. Right metal. Uh, Justin Guerrero with the Pittsburgh Trib again. Ryan, you don't shoot a, a whole lot of threes. You, you nailed a pretty pretty big one in that second OT. Just uh, can you break down that play, that sequence? Uh, what did you see out there that uh, made you decide to, to toss that one up from deep? Uh, well, <laughs> Mac told me to make 100 after practice and 100 before practice, the two practices we had before we came here. So that helped prepare me. But uh, no, Mac, Mac's always giving me the green light. You know, I work on that shot a lot. And even though I don't shoot him a ton during the game, I, I got confidence in myself to take that shot. And uh, I know that's probably the the number one shot Mac wanted on that possession. <laughs> but uh, no, yeah, I mean, I just work on it. So I'm confident in taking that whenever, even if it's a close game. So, so I had a little bit of space and let it fly. Oh, we got time for two more to the right. John Walker, Omaha World Herald. Guys, you, you were 30 seconds away in regulation from, from having your season ended. What, what does it feel like to now know that you'll be playing next week in Detroit? Uh, yeah, it's a great feeling. I mean, I know I speak for everybody up here. We we love this group of guys. We love rocking and rolling together. We love all the all, everything that, that comes with the road trips and us just being able to have another week with each other. So we're going to cherish them. We're going to try to stay in the moment and just continue to love each other and continue to play at a level that we feel like we can play at. And then, you know, from there, we just kind of let the dominoes fall where they do. All right, last question on the right. Matty Marius, White and Blue Review. This is for anybody who wants to let it rip. Uh, Jason was like baby Rodman out there. <laughs> what'd, you, what'd you think of his performance, just the way he just came out and started just crashing the glass, drawing fouls, and then obviously the, your reaction to just the monster dunk in overtime? Yeah, well, like, like Coach said, you know, he's been a, a great teammate all year, even though, you know, he kind of got that injury kind of at the worst time and it kind of um, derailed some of his playing time early, but he stuck with it um, and did whatever we asked him to do. Um, and for him to have that moment on that stage, um, like Trey said, we're so happy for one another when one of us, you know, makes a great play and for Jason to, you know, um, make that put back dunk there um, at the end and then a bunch of other plays that he made. Um, you know, it's just great to see and, um, you know, all of us are really proud of him. Um, and, and like I said, he deserves that. All right, thank you. Roll James, baby. <laughs> Okay, questions for Coach McDermott. Front left. It's James Crepe from the Oregonian. Greg, a two-parter. Have you ever seen a duo do what 
Kuznard and Dante did in that they never left the floor in the second half in overtime and they scored all 39 of their points <coughs> into the second part of it. <coughs> when that could discourage a team, how did your team show the medal and your players show the medal to not let that be discouraging when two guys are having that kind of performance? Yeah, I mean, I had three guys play 50 minutes, so I've seen it a lot uh, on our roster, being out there a lot. You know, Kuzinar was was terrific. Uh, he got 32, but it was on 33 shots. Um, and, and you know, I felt like, uh, you know, to Ryan's point, uh, you know, Dante's – He's so physical on the backside on those back on the rebounds. Uh, you know, when we come with help, we just we just didn't have an answer for him to try to get him off. But they're they're two terrific players. We knew <clears throat> they were going to be hard to stop, and uh, you know, fortunately, <laughs> we made one more play than they did. But there was there's a lot of big plays by both teams, and and you know, Cousinard certainly made a bunch of them, as did Dante. But uh, you know, we had our fair share as well. Question on the left here. <coughs> Matt Prem, 24-7 Sports. How much was it to limit everybody else besides Dante and, and, and Kuzma <coughs> what they could do? Because they didn't get much help from it, you know, those other guys. Yeah, I mean, not many other guys took shots. So, uh, But, you know, we had a plan for personnel. Some guys we were going under, some guys we were going over. Uh, and for the most part, we followed that plan. I thought we made some mistakes on Cousinard, uh the first half in particular. <coughs> and to Kalk's point, he, he got caught a couple times uh, with Dante where he got – Dante was able to get an angle, and when he gets an angle, it's over. Um, but some of those shots, you know, he made over them. That, that's two really good big guys going at it. And Ryan made a couple on the block, and Dante made a few on the block that are really hard plays, but they look easy because those two are so talented. Question far right. Matty Marinas, White and Blue Review, Mac. I kind of asked the guys this about just coming out loose in the second overtime. It looked like they were just kind of having fun before the thing got tipped up, and then. <coughs> Before it went into second overtime, you and Dana just kind of looked at each other like in disbelief. <laughs> like, it just kind of shared a laugh. Like, what was it like to coach that game, even though it was really stressful at the yeah, same time? Yeah, I mean, I, Dana and I caught each other's eye at that point. It, I mean, it was just an incredible game. Just, you know, Baylor making the big plays at the end of regulation and, and uh, you know, Jer Jermaine making the play at the end of the first overtime to send it to second overtime. Just, and then, you know, Trey gets a great look down along the baseline after he fumbled it. You know, he makes that shot, you know, 19 out of 20 times, but he misses it. So <laughs> I think we were both in di disbelief of, about what was transpired in front of our eyes. But <clears throat> you know, I'm no, I know I'm really proud of our team for the way they competed, and I'm, I'm pretty certain Dana feels the same. Question on the right. Drevon Sayo, College Basketball Review. Coach, this is your third Sweet 16 appearance now in the last four years. What is it about this group that is special and makes them different from the previous ones? I mean, they're all special in their own way. Um, you know, some sometimes in sport, the hardest thing to do is what you're expected to do. And, um, you know, last year's group had huge preseason expectations on them, and we went through a terrible stretch where we lost six in a row, and we were able to kind of rebound from it and get ourselves back in the tournament <clears throat> and get to an elite eight. This group has had that on their shoulders from the start. And, you know, when Trey and – when Kalk make the decision to come back uh, after going through the draft process and, you know, Baylor deciding to come back for his fifth year, um, you know, they had this in mind. This is this is what they were shooting for, is to get back and ha have another opportunity to try to get to another Elite Eight, and we put ourselves in that position. But the, this team has just been, and I've said it before at our local meeting, they've been an <laughs> absolute joy to coach. and. Uh, what you saw going into that second overtime, uh, them being loose and them having fun. They love the game. They love each other. It's obvious, uh, you know, when you watch them interact on or off the basketball floor, um, they, they are the first ones to uh, celebrate their teammate's success, and they're the first one to come to rally to a teammate uh, when he makes a, t a play that he didn't like. And it's just been an absolute blast to be part of. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, selfishly, I'm, I'm obviously – Excited that I get to coach him at least another week. Our last two questions, front left and then middle right. James Kirby with the Oregonian. Greg, we spent the last two days asking a lot about you and Dana in this matchup. Uh, how does it feel to get this one? Does this make up for the over and back? And <laughs> with them joining the Big Ten and going to Nebraska every other year, I know he's been avoiding playing you for personal reasons, but would you be open to doing this voluntarily and not by force in the postseason? Yeah, I mean, uh, everybody in Omaha cheers for Dana. And they, and they always will. And 
he's been there 14 years, so you, you people in Eugene understand why everybody cheers for him. He's a stand-up guy. Uh, he, he's about the right stuff in coaching. And, uh, you know, I, we both preferred not to have this game uh, against each other. We'd both rather played somebody else. Um, but one had to win, one had to lose. And it, it was, like I said, it was an epic game. And uh, they, they had a trem tremendous year. And while I know he's going to be really disappointed in the loss, <coughs> I'm pretty certain that Friday he'll be cheering for the Blue Jays, just like I would have been cheering for Oregon had they won. All right, last question, far right. Cameron Hoover, Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Coach, uh, double overtime game, and it's it's a little past 12.50 a.m. local time right now. Can you just sort of speak to the, your team's conditioning and if that kind of posed any challenges <coughs> playing that late into the night? You know, I can't remember which overtime uh, I talked to him and said, we're, we're built for this. <laughs> you know, we... We play fast. We, we're on the attack, um, and we're ready for that. And and you know our our strength coach Jeremy Anderson and our athletic trainer Ben McNair do a great job of <clears throat> managing their minutes and their bodies and how much we do outside or, or during a week of practice in preparation to game to make sure that they're ready. But you know double overtime uh, on this stage, uh, the last game of the night. You know, we got a couple lucky bounces there. Uh, I, I lost my mom this year. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure she helped with a couple bounces tonight. Thanks, Coach. A couple of reminders before we begin. We're going to start with an opening statement from the head coach, followed with the questions for the student athletes. At the conclusion of the questions for student athletes, they'll be dismissed, then questions for the head coach can start. Please raise your hand and someone will come around with a microphone. Please give your name and media affiliation. If you're joining on Zoom, please use the raise hand function for questions. We will address the questions in the room first and get to Zoom if time allows. Now we'll start with the opening statement from Oregon's head coach, Dana Altman. Well, it was a heck of a game. And, um, you know, we had our opportunities. Um, 
and we just we made more mistakes than they did. Um, you know, uh, it was a great effort, especially by my two seniors, uh, uh, Jermaine and, and Dante, uh, played their tails off. And uh, we just uh, had our opportunities and made some critical mistakes and uh, didn't finish it in regulation um, and uh, got ourselves back into it in the first overtime. And then uh, second overtime, they popped a couple threes there to, to start it, and um, we just couldn't couldn't get a basket. So, you know, I, Creighton's got a really good team. Uh, those guys have been together. Uh, they're, they're really well coached, and uh, Greg does a tremendous job. And thought it was a heck of a game, and uh, we made some critical mistakes, and uh, it, it cost us. OK, representing Oregon student athletes are in Folly Dante and Jadrian Tracy. Questions for student athletes. Front left. James Kirby with the Oregonian. Dante, to play the final 38 plus minutes, to play 48 minutes tonight and have a career high in scoring, I realize this is after a loss, but how do you feel like you played? And that's probably the best game of your career. And I realize it's disappointing in a loss, but how do you feel about that performance? Because that was, that's hard to find. Well. I would not say best of game of my career because we didn't win. So I wish I could uh, make that last free throw. That could be the game, but that's for me. It's a lot of things I could do to help my team, but I didn't. Left aisle. Matt Prem, 24-7 sports for, for both of you guys. Just I know the, the loss hurts. Can you just describe? the emotions of this last couple of weeks and the ride that this has been? Trace, you want to start? Um, it's been a great ride and a great journey with these guys. Um, we all bought in at the end of the season um, and really stayed connected. I know Dante's going to be hard on himself about that, but um, it was great working with him. He did a lot of things to keep us in that game, and we had our chances, but they played well. What was your question again? Can you repeat the question again? What was your experience? Your emotions are probably the loss, but the ride the last two weeks, what, is, what has it been like for you guys? It's been great, you know. We stuck together and then we was there for each other. But uh, I think it was great. Questions for student athletes? Back middle. Will Graves, Associated Press, you guys didn't get to the line at all. I mean, Dante, your free throw there at the end of regulation was like the first one of the game. What was it about their defense that was sort of allowing, you know, getting stops without, you know, getting in foul trouble? Well, I don't know. I really don't know. I just, we just didn't do everything we're supposed to do, to be honest, but. I don't know what 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 to even say. I mean, it's just, this one is just hurt. Questions for student athletes. Front left. James Kirby, the Oregonian. Bam, when Jackson went out there, and definitely the second overtime, I think a little bit into the first. What impact did that have on y'all's defense, uh, particularly as Ashworth was able to get free for some threes uh, in the overtime periods? Oh. How did how did Jackson being out impact the defense? Um, I mean, I'm not too sure. We had our chances, like I said. We just made some mistakes. Um, he played, he guarded um, all night very well. And um, yeah, it would have been great to have him out there too. Question in the back and to the right. Michael Grady, Duquesne Duke. And Folly, what was it like battling Kalkbrenner tonight? You guys had, you guys were epic up against each other. Can you just say something about that? It's a basketball, man. He's going to play basketball. I mean, he's a pretty good player, but this is good. Uh, I don't know. He's a really good player, so it's a little tougher. Our last question right here for student athletes. And Fala, can you speak about playing with Kuznard, what that's been like, and just the run that he had 
today, a couple week, days ago, and just the last couple weeks? It's been great, you know. It's great to play for every single one of them, and they helped me become better player and coaches and stuff. I think uh, every single one of them in my team and my team is really deserve better than that. I think we should win this one, but it is what it is. But it's great. I'm gonna miss it, and, and this is her. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Questions for Coach Altman. Front left. Dana, you've coached for a long time. Uh, <laughs> what your two seniors did from the second half on, not leaving the floor, Dante for the eight minutes even in the first half, so 38-10 unanswered. Uh, all 39 points, second half and overtimes. Uh, how do you even put into words what you just got out of those two? They played their tails off. Um, absolutely no doubt about it. Um, Dante, 28 and 20. Uh, <laughs> and Jermaine, um, we needed some more contributions from some other guys. Um, Jackson going down, I think four minutes in the game left. Uh, he's got a knee sprain and, and um, uh, I hope Hope it's not serious, but he couldn't move, and you know we thought about putting him back in, but he just he wasn't moving, and and I didn't want to take a chance if it's partially tore or something. I just I didn't want to take a chance, so that hurt a little bit with ball handling. Jermaine had to do even more, and um, we just we we made some critical mistakes. Um, up four, you can't foul in transition and give him two free throws and uh, you know and then Dante just missed a big free throw but god dang what do you think I and that's that's my fault I had a freshman throwing the ball in and um, you know I I'm as much to blame as anybody I, I made some coaching mistakes and um, I might have to live with that because those two guys you know the last you know, everybody talks about the last couple of weeks like that's the only time those two guys played. I mean, they've been playing their tails off all year. You know, uh, we've been riding them <laughs> all year. And uh, yeah. so uh, it was special to, to watch those two guys um, and just, uh, you know, we had our chance. Like I said, we we had our chance. We just made some critical mistakes there in regulation, and uh, and that's on me. So, um, I don't want to take nothing away from Creighton. They they're a really good team, and they know what they want, and and they've played together, and their execution is stuff. But our guys battled. We tried to guard and uh, rebounding. You know, I, I was a little disappointed there. I thought we could have rebounded the ball a little better, and that was basically the difference in the game. They had. 21 second chance points. We had 14, so it was 14 to two at half. So uh, that was that was a big difference. Question left aisle. Matt Prem, 24/7 Sports. You, you kind of touched on it there, but can you just explain the importance what Dante and Kuznard have meant for this program the, the whole year and just kind of building what you want for next season? Well, when you when you coach. You admire guys that uh, fight through adversity, you know, uh, that love the game and fight through adversity. And uh, both those guys had some knee problems um, throughout their career, and they just kept battling. And they played through it and uh, rehab, get back. Um, you know, I felt bad for you know Dante and, and Jermaine just to put such a load on them you know it just uh, it would have been nice to get them some help and um, and have you know prepared our other guys to step up a little bit more and that's on me too 
Um, so, you know, we, we really put a lot on Jermaine there late. I mean, he had, uh, he had to do everything. When Jackson went down, we had no other ball handlers, and uh, he tried to fight through it. And, uh, uh, but just came up a little short. I got time for just two more. First one, front left. Dana, looking ahead into what you do address in the off season, what what is the priority in terms of talent acquisition? Is it center, defense, ball handler? And when when Nate says he's coming back, he says he's open to it. And I'm sure the three freshmen are in a good spot. That's that's a nice nucleus to start with. How how do you feel about how it looks like on paper right now? When what you feel like you need to address? Ah, uh, James, isn't a good time to talk about that. I. We, we got a lot of work to do and you know I it's a new age I don't know who's coming back who's going uh, you know my focus was on this team uh, you know I owe it to the guys I got you know I had the assistants are working on recruiting some guys and they put me on the phone with a few but you know I recruited these guys and they they deserve my full attention and and um, and now I'll Stay up all night thinking about where we're going to go next year um, and how we're going to figure things out. But you lose two kids like that, holy cow. I mean, <laughs> we, we rode those two guys so hard. <clears throat> we, we got, we're going to have some, have some of those young guys step up. They're going to have to make some big dang jumps. That's for sure. All right, last question, left aisle. Matt Prem, 24-7 sports. What's this year been like for you and the way it ended, I know tonight, but the last couple of weeks and how it ended, how, how satisfying, how's, how would you describe this year for you? Oh, you know, up and down. Um, you know, I was so excited at the start of the year. You know, we had so many guys and I thought, man, depths is going to be our, <laughs> our calling card. And, and, uh, um, and then I thought we got, you know, Nate and, and Keyshawn back there. And then, you know, Nate goes down and Keyshawn dislocates that ankle. And, and then our depth goes. Uh, uh, so it's it been a roller coaster. I, you know, uh, I was so excited all summer and uh, in the fall watching the guys. And I'm, I, we got Dante and Nate. We got two seven-footers. We got KJ at six, you know, ten. We got... Uh, Bam and and Cario, good athletes, and you know Mookie's going to get back. And, you know Jesse was shooting the ball good, and we had quick guards and and uh, Keyshawn and Jackson, and and so as a coach you get really excited, you know. Um, and then they start dropping a little bit, and like oh now what do we do? You know and then Dante's got knee surgery and out ten weeks, and I, you guys that watch the game tonight you're like. What did you do in those ten weeks? You know, <laughs> uh, but the other guys stepped up and, and played okay, and uh, so there was a lot of up and down. But I, I I love working with this group. They were really good. Um, I don't think they knew how to take me. You know, they, the trust level. You know. You know, I bite them a little bit, and you know, they anything gets personal. I'm I'm just trying to get them to play a little harder, and uh, so I got I got a lot of work to do. Uh, got a lot of work to do with guys, and um, um, you know, but I I want to make it clear they're they're a good group, and uh, you know, I'm more mad at myself than I am at them, and I, I couldn't be any prouder of Dante and and uh, Jermaine. And what they meant to this program and this team, and their toughness. You know, uh, I mean, they were dead tired, and they were just they were grinding. You know, they they didn't want the season to end, and uh, that, that you know, that's a quality that you know you just as a coach you just love. You know, and uh, uh, but I I wish Creighton all the best. I hope. You know, I hope they get to the Final Four. Um, you know, it'd be great for that program. I'd love to see it. Um, you know, they'll they'll swing away. They they got a lot of shooters, and uh, you know, they hit some big threes tonight. And uh, you know, we just we lost them a couple times, and 
and uh, it cost us. But uh, again, I, I wish them all the best. Uh, we made mistakes, they, they didn't, and they found a way to get us and uh, uh, be a long off season, but uh, we'll figure out a way to try to put a, a team together and, and uh, be ready to go next year. Thanks, Coach. You bet.